Hello everyone from all over the world. Welcome to my session on Excel Virtually Global 2021 on Office Scripts. My name is Jan Karel Pietersen and I'm ready for you here today to talk about Office Scripts. Uh, first a little bit about myself. Uh, I, I'm a chemical engineer by education and I first, first worked in the chemical industry for like 19 years. Um, during that time, I started using spreadsheets to process my data. And the first spreadsheet application I used was Lotus 123, way back in the mid 80s, when computers still ran on DOS. Um, then in 1996, I started using Excel version 5 back then. And in 2002, I received my first Microsoft MVP award for Excel. Um, ever since 2003, I'm a self-employed Excel consultant, and you can find me at jkp-ads.com. So what are we going to do today? Uh, first, we'll do the getting started bit, and that is to make sure that you can actually start recording scripts. So that is the admin stuff. Then I will be recording my first script. Uh, after that, I'll show you how the scripts are organized, and uh, that means where they are stored. We will then start writing a script from scratch, just to show you how that is done. Um, I'll talk a little bit about performance improvements, uh, then I'll talk about debugging, how to share a script, and if there's time left, we'll have a Q&A at the end. Right, getting started. So the first thing you would need to do is to go to the office.com website and log in with your Microsoft account, your Microsoft 365 account. And this may not be available to all Microsoft 365 users. It may be an area that is hidden from view for you because your administrator only has access to this section. But I'll show it anyway, just in case you have to explain to your admin where to find the switch. So the first thing to do here is to click on the admin button. So we'll do that and a new tab opens and if all's well, you're already logged in. So the quick and dirty easy way to find the switch is to click in the search box and just type office script. And if all is well, you should see office scripts appear in the search results down here. So you just click this and the side page side pane opens with the Office Script settings. And these are the settings that I has set up. So I am just allowing everyone in my tenants to do everything that's needed to do with Office Scripts. Um, but your admin may decide to maybe just assign it to specific groups or do other stuff. So that's the first entry into the Office Scripts um setting um, just in case you can't find it uh, the actual path to get there is to click here on show all then to expand settings then to click org settings and then you get one big long list of everything which happens to be in alphabetical order and all the way down at the s it says uh, I mean, at the O, of course, um, it says Office Scripts, and you click that. And you get the same dialog that I showed you just a minute ago. That you've written or used um, recently. Um, this, if, if you start using Office Scripts for the very first time, then this gallery contains a number of sample scripts. It's currently empty because I have emptied the location where my scripts are just for this presentation. So let's start recording. Uh, let me first click on cell A1. So we're going to walk through this list and record those actions. So I'm open up, starting the recorder now. And as you can see, we have a side pane here that says that we're recording and there's a stop button here to actually stop recording. And look, we even have a restart button um, so that we can redo the entire recording from scratch. Okay, so I said enter my name in A1. Sorry for the loud keyboard. And I'll enter the 
date and current time in A2, and then I'll enter region into A4 and sales into B4. And then I'll create a table, control L in my case. My table has headers. That's right. And I'll change the name of the table. Um, regional sales. Let's call it regional sales. And I'll let me enter some data here. So we have north, we have south, and we have east, and we have west. And let's make up some sales 100, 200, 100, and minus 50. Uh, that's odd. Let's not do minus 50. Let's do 50. And that's it. And if you look on the, at the right, you actually see um, in shorthand what the recorder has noticed that you've been doing. So let's stop the recorder here. And let's have a look at the code. And all there is to it is clicking this edit, edit button. And let's make this slightly larger. Editor settings, font size, 18. Oh, great, thank you. I'm going to go back to automate, click script one, edit script one. And there we are. This is our recorded script. And let's fold this to a shorter right so that we can see all of the scripts in the window. So let's talk through this script here and I'll tell you what's going on. So every script record starts with the same first bit. The function is always called main and the argument that the function gets is always the active workbook. So office scripts always work on one workbook, never on more than one. So the first action that the script does is it sets a variable called selected sheet. And as you can see, the recorder made up that name for you to the active work worksheet using that workbook object, that workbook variable that was passed to the script by the script recorder. And it uses the method called get work, active worksheets to get the active worksheet. Uh, then it's actually um, sets cells A1 and A2 together to the values that I entered. So actually the script recorder um, more or less tied together the two entries that I made, namely my name and the date and time, and puts them into the sheet in one command. Uh, the same goes to for the two table headers that I entered, uh, region and sales. It pushes that to the grid in one command and that is to save on performance because um, the more you interact with excel the slower your script becomes so uh, as if you can push as many as the entries into one command as you can it makes your script faster uh, next i inserted a table that apparently creates this line here let new table equals workbook dot add table um, for the range A4 to B5 and true is the checkbox that I set marking that the table has headers. Uh, then I renamed the table and finally I entered data for north, south, east and west and as you can see that too is entered into the spreadsheet in just one command. So let's just test if this script works. I'm going to get rid of all of this. Let's just right click and delete cells and shift up. And let's just run the script and see if we get what we expect. Well, there you go. We have my name again with a new time and the same data that I entered earlier. So let's see if this actually works and do 250 as the West sales. Get rid of this again, delete and run the script and you should see 250 at the bottom here. It works, good. Now let's move on to how scripts are organized or in short, where are they stored? 
Um, to find them, you go to your OneDrive. And in OneDrive, you click the Documents folder. And there it is. The Office Scripts folder contains all of the scripts that you've written and recorded using the Automate tab. So currently it only contains one called script1.osts. So that's all there is to it. That's, that's where your scripts are. Uh, if you want to um, do other software scripts, the Automate tab is the place to be. Writing your own scripts from scratch. So let's write a script from scratch. Um, the first thing to do, of course, is determine what are we going to write. Uh, and I came up with the idea to write the script that first checks your workbook to see if there's a sheet tab named TOC for Table of Contents. And if it's there, it deletes it. And then it inserts a new one and adds a table to that sheet, which contains all of your worksheets and a hyperlink to each cell A1 of each of them. And to do that hyperlinking, I use the hyperlink function. And I'll show you that, F2, hyperlink. And the trick of the hyperlink function, hyperlink function is if you want to point to an internal worksheet, you start the, using the pound sign, a single apostrophe to cater for worksheet names that has a space in them. Then add the name of the sheet, which is in the cell to the left and then enter an apostrophe again, exclamation mark, and the cell that we want the hyperlink to point to. And then finally, the last argument is the text that we want displayed, which is the name of the sheet. And to prove that this work, uh, works, I'll click on sheet three and you'll see that we get pushed to sheet three. So that is actually the function that we want written. So we click the Automate tab and click on New Script. And the script editor opens with a blank script with nothing in here. So let's get rid of this comment and start writing. So um, the first thing I said was we want to check whether a worksheet named TOC exists. And if it does, delete it. Um, and I stole this from the sample scripts, which is in the link that's at the end of the presentation with um, example stuff. I'm sorry. And OK, continue here. So um, and that's done by using an if statement. So here's the structure of an if statement in JavaScript. If workbook and we want to get a worksheet dot get worksheet toc and actually this is all that's needed in the uh, first argument of the is statement because this statement actually returns a false if the worksheet does not exist so we then want to execute is supposing it exists we want to set a temporary variable to that particular worksheet using the same structure again. So let me copy that. Control C equals that. And let's get rid of it. Temp dot delete. Don't forget the open and closing um, parentheses, otherwise it won't work. So this actually this little function actually checks for a worksheet called TOC, and if it's there, it deletes it. So let's try that. Let's just run this, and you should see the TOC sheet, sheet disappear. There you go. That works. Good. We're not there yet. Um, so now we need a list of all worksheets in the workbook. So let's assign a new variable called all sheets and get from that from workbook again dot get worksheets this time the plural version because that gives us all worksheets. We need opening and closing parentheses again and the semicolon to end the statement. So that gives us all worksheets. Um, now we can add 
the worksheet that will actually contain the table of contents to TOC sheet. So let's just add that. Let's TOC sheet equals workbook dot add worksheet TOC. Not difficult, is it? Um, we need a pointer to a cell so that we know where we are. Let's call. Uh, let's start the TOC in cell B2. Let report cell. And you only have to do the let once, the first time you use a variable. And we're going to use TOC sheet dot range get range cell B2. See my colon to close the statement, so that's report cell. And let's add a table at that position. Net new table equals workbook dot add table report where in the report cell location report cell and it will have headers and that's it see my column um, let's set the header of the table report cell dot get resize range so the report cell is only one cell wide and I want to set a value to two cells next to each other so I'm going to resize by zero rows and by one column so this actually gives us the cells b2 and b3 uh, c2 um, equals I mean dot set values because it's more than one and what are we setting we are setting an array which needs double opening square brackets and then we are passing worksheet as the header and link link did I type link link yes right so let's see what this gives us run Well, there you go. We have a tab TOC, and it contains a table that has a first column named worksheet and the second column named link. Good. We're doing well. Um, next thing to add is actually go through the all sheets collection, which does not contain the TOC sheet, which is why I first delete the TOC sheet before I actually assign all worksheets to the variable called all sheets. So we're going to loop through that collection of all sheets and I'm going to use a loop counter to do that. So we're going to use four and we're going to use loop counter I let space I equals zero semicolon all sheets dot length and I'm going to end the loop when I'm going to actually end the loop and I'm going to end the loop when I is less than I mean greater than all sheets dot length for as long as okay I'm going to run that loop for as long as I is less than all sheets dot length and at each pass I will add one to I which is this statement and we're going to do that right here okay so now we're ready to actually write the worksheet names into the table so when we start this table is actually empty so let's delete it now here just for presentation purposes right and uh, what we need to ha have the code do is write sheet 
one into here and sheet two into here. Never mind the typos. Um, so for that, we're going to use the report cell variable that we already created above and use a new feature that I haven't shown you yet is using get offset range. So we're going to offset the position of the report cell using that I counter in the loop, I, uh, which on the first count is zero and actually we're starting on B2, so we must add plus one. Um, I'm going to use column one for this, so I'm going to not offset any columns. And here we're going to set the value of that cell. And given that we're only setting the value of one cell at a time, we use the, the singular version of set value in this case, and not set values multiple. So opening bracket, um, what are we setting? We're actually setting the name of all sheets square bracket i closing square bracket dot get name opening and closing bracket and that should be all so let me just run this and see what happens and let's check the toc page and there you go we have a sheet one sheet two and sheet three so now what about that link that I just talked about? Mm. And that's actually slightly more difficult uh, because I'm using the hyperlink function. So let me just type the hyperlink function. No, let me just record a macro because I don't know the syntax for actually adding a, a link to a cell. So let me just record my action. So um, equals hyperlink. And the hyperlink has this special syntax that I mentioned uh, just uh, some minutes ago, where I have to add the pound sign and the first, um, the apostrophe. And I'm joining that with the content of cell B3. And that I'm to that I'm adding the cell address that I wanted to point to, namely A1. And then I want a friendly name, which is, again, B3. Enter. So let me stop that recorder and see what has been recorded. Edit. Interesting. Um, Apparently, it, it, it does. It, it knows what what cell I used, and then it uses a formula called a, a, a command called set formula local. And this is something I don't like because, for example, imagine that your coworker is entering this formula into a sheet, but your coworker is using Excel in Dutch. Um, he might have different separators than you have. For example, you have the semicolon, but he might have the comma as a list separator in his spreadsheet. So what I would prefer that macro recorder or script recorder to do is actually use set formula. And because we were smart enough to um, convert this range to a table, this a statement should be all we need to actually fill the entire column with the same formula. So let me just copy this. Copy. And go back to my scripts. And find my script. Oh, I can just click here. Script 1, I think it was. Script 1, edit. There you go, script 1. So we need to put that uh, Within no it doesn't need to go within the for loop, it needs to go outside of the for loop. So I'll paste here and selected sheet actually is the TOC sheet. And well C three is still the right cell. So let's see if this works. Um Let's just run this. Well, look here. 
sheet one can't open link. There must be a typo in the link. Let me double check that formula. Hyperlink, pound sign, apostrophe, B4, apostrophe. Ah, we're missing the exclamation mark here. So that means, let me test this. The hyperlink works. That means that that same exclamation mark should go there. Let's run the code again. TOC. There you go. Now we have working hyperlinks. Great. So that was our first script that we manually wrote. Um, of course, we should give that script a meaningful name. So let's just rename the script. Three dots here. Rename. Insert table of content. There you go. So now it's time for performance improvements. Uh, but in order to actually know whether you've made any improvements, you first have to have a means of recording the time that your script takes. So to our insert table of content script, I've added two lines. The first one is recording the starting moment of your script. And the second line I've added is the one that records the past time into the uh, log area of the console here. Uh, to see that works, I'll just click run. And you'll see the number 433 appear here. Let's just write those numbers to the cells and run this a couple of times. Run 393. 393, run again, 514, and as you can see, the number varies quite a bit. 398, it's now entering into nowhere, 398. And of course, I could have written the, the, the script to update these cells directly, but I didn't. Uh, 454, 454, enter run 361 boring but effective so the average of this 425 good so that's just our current script so how would we optimize this script um office script is actually typescript so um each of the variables that you're using can actually be assigned a um object type. So for example, for the start, that's our starting date, um, that actually is a number. And our temporary variable, that is a worksheet. So we have to use the objects Excel script library dot worksheet. And remember that it's all case sensitive. So if you mistype any of them by using the wrong case, that'll cause problems uh, indicated by the squiggly lines. Um, so yeah, and all sheets, that's also a worksheet, but it's a collection of worksheets. So the syntax for that is Excel script dot worksheets square brackets. So that's the syntax. So in order to save you the boring repeat of entering stuff, I'm going to open the insert table of content one where I have added all the variable types already. Also to save me typing and save me from mistakes. And so here I have defined the type of each and every variable in this script. So let's see if we get different timings for this script. So let's run this. It's, it does exactly the same except for the variable declaration. So we have a 405 here, 405, 379, run 397 run 501 
And you, as you can already see, the, the numbers vary quite a little bit. And it may take quite some a number of tests to get a stable result and maybe remove outliers and everything before, before you can actually compare these numbers. But as you can see, there is a difference and I've tested this with longer scripts and it, it can run up to as much as 20% depending on exactly what your script is doing. Um, so a script with everything declared might run as much as 25% faster than a script where you haven't declared any variables. So that, that's a way to, one, measure performance and second, make improvements. Um, other important, important improvements to your script speed are to, um, instead of writing the value of each worksheet name to the table of contents one by one, you can imagine that it's uh, more efficient to gather these worksheet names into an array and write the array into cells A3 to A5 in one statement. So that's also quicker. So avoid four next loops, writing values or reading values from sheets one at a time. Try and write everything in one go. Debugging. Right, so if you've ever debugged VBA code, you know that you can step through code, um, set what next statement to um, execute and stuff like that, change variable names on the fly and all sort of beautiful stuff. You can't do that with Office Script, I'm afraid. Um, Office Script it runs on a server, so you can't actually um, F8 through your code like you're used to when you're programming VBA. Um, in fact, the only real thing that you can do is write stuff to, uh, for example, the immediate window, let's call it the immediate window, the console log, or maybe to cells. So, for example, if we want to know whether or not this if statement yields a true, we can use console.log. Yes. Talk X is and we'll see my column. So if we now run the script, we should see that text appear here. Yes, talk exists. And if we remove the table of contents first, delete, okay, and then run the script, we should not see that message appear here. So that works. And in fact, that's really the only thing that you can do. So at the right spot, enter a console.log to display that something's happening. For example, here uh, you might show the counter. Console.log i. Something like that. What's wrong here? Yes, it's now warning me that um, if I put a console.log inside a loop, it could lead to slow performance, but who cares because I'm doing this on purpose. So now I have run this script. It should show one, two, three here. Zero, one, two, of course. So there you go. Console.log is your friend when debugging scripts. Sharing scripts. So if you want your coworker to have access to your scripts, you might think that you can share scripts right from the list of scripts right here using the three dots. Um, it's not here. You have to actually do that on a per script basis by clicking on the script itself. And then the three dots here have a share option. Um, unfortunately, the only sharing option we have at the moment is um, by sharing the script, by attaching it to the work workbook that we are currently looking at. So there's no means of sharing a script as it is with your coworkers. You can only share a script with a workbook. Yeah, let me just click share. So now this script is shared with all my coworkers inside this workbook. So it's available in this workbook for my coworkers. And I can unshare that script, stop sharing, by clicking the same three dots and selecting stop sharing. 
And I have a checkbox here that says stop sharing in all workbooks. So if I have attached this script to multiple workbooks, I can stop sharing on all those workbooks in one go. And unfortunately, I don't have a list of workbooks that that script has been shared with here. Um, I don't know if there's a way to actually find that out. So that concludes my presentation on Office scripts. And it's time to open the floor for questions and answers. I thank you for listening and I hope you'll enjoy the next sessions. Um, please type your answers in the chat window and I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. Thank you.